Is Alex Lifeson really underrated? So I want to talk a little bit about Alex Lifeson, our, our favorite guitarist of the band Rush. And it seems like there's somewhat of an obsession of trying to make him part of the elite best guitarist or having him ranked as top guitarist of all time or in that category. And when we think of greatest guitarist of all time, not we, but generally the public, they think of guitars, guitarists like uh, Eddie Van Halen, um, Stevie Ray Vaughan, Eric Clapton, maybe even Joe Satriani, um, maybe even John Pertucci. But really does Alex Lifeson get thrown in that mix? And I'm gonna try to explain why that is and why that shouldn't even matter. If we take the example of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, when did it ever matter to Rush that they were not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? I mean, they might have thought about it a little bit and, you know, remembering Alex's rant when they actually did accept, or when they did get the nomination and induction finally, you know, I think it showed a little bit how much they cared about that as far as being ranked the best or being recognized by the industry as, as the best. But typically when there are discussions about the greatest, uh, Alex Lifeson is not included. And I think it's because there is a very limited scope or a limited idea as far as what greatest is. When we talk about greatest guitarists, I keep saying we, but talking about in general, when we're talking about greatest guitarists, um, the thought generally is a great shredder and, you know, mainly that, <laughs> a great shredder and among other things, you know, their longevity or their impact on the industry in music as a whole. But then again, Alex Lifeson is not there per se. I think Alex Lifeson is kind of an oddity as far as great guitarists go. If you think of him from the beginning, he's actually, you know, a rock guitarist. And yeah, he had influences like Yes and Genesis where you had guitarists like Steve Howe and Steve Hackett, which were, you know, talking about classical guitarists or classically trained guitarists. And they incorporated that into the progressive rock that they created. But Alex at the beginning, he was a rock guitarist. And then actually from the second album on, when Neil Peart joined the band, they got more, we, we could say, progressive. And they even got label, labeled as a progressive metal band. But in Geddy Lee's words, the band was not really themselves, they didn't consider themselves uh, progressive rockers or a band that wanted to further that genre. They were more interested in progressing themselves, which is why after the Hemispheres album, they took, you know, a left turn and created Permanent Waves, which had, you know, kind of poppy sounds, uh, but still had progressive rock elements in it. But they toned down their, what's considered progressive rock, that genre, and, you know, they just went their way. And Alex Lifeson pretty much has adapted his playing to that. I consider him more as a rock guitarist playing progressive rock. He definitely is a shredder in the truest sense of the word. And actually, you know, my, my thinking of Alex is that he's kind of a cross between the aforementioned Steve Hackett of Genesis, uh, a cross between him and John Pertucci where Steve Hackett was really a, in a progressive rock band, classically sounding, you know, lyrical guitarist, and, you know, he played the electric guitar too, memorable guitar solos like in um, Firth of Fifth. And then you have, on the other extreme, John Pertucci, world-class guitarist, where, I mean, shreds like no other. I mean, his, his shredding ability is, is incredible. And then you have Alex, I think, who encompasses all of that in between because there are definitely some moments of classical guitar that he plays like in, you know, A Farewell to Kings, you know, Close to the Heart, The Trees. And then you have his incredible shredding ability, which he exhibited in uh, Natural Science, The Camera Eye, The Analog Kid, Free Will, and many other songs. So I think Alex Moore is a guitarist that pretty much morphed his 
style or his playing into whatever the songs required. And that is, I think, what I most admire about the band, not just him, but the three of them, is that they had a concept of a song and instead of them forcing the song to sound like their individual abilities, they crafted the song and used their abilities to enhance the song. So really the song was the key point. Everything was about the song and it was not really about themselves. And in the process, even when each one of them soloed within the songs, you had the other two soloing underneath, doing their thing, that if you compartmentalized each of the individual's contributions to the song, they all stood out. But, you know, they all did their solos without overshadowing the other. It was always in support of whoever was soloing. And in the case of Alex, you know, his solos were sparse as far as songs go. He didn't shred every single song. Whereas in typical rock fashion, you expect the song to have, you know, a verse, bridge, chorus, then back to verse, bridge, chorus, shredding, then maybe back to bridge, chorus, and then finishing the song, or outro, or whatever. It kind of follows that pattern. Whereas, you know, you get a song like Red Barchetta, which doesn't follow any of that. It's just like a story that weaves and bobs and comes to a, a conclusion. And it does have a solo in it too, but it fits exactly where it needs to be it serves a purpose for furthering the story it wasn't shredding or lead guitar playing just for the fact of doing it it actually fit the song exactly the way it needed it the other thing i want to point out that makes alex such a great guitarist and not necessarily that he fits into the mold of what people consider a great guitarist is that he actually sacrificed himself for for the song and neil neil Peart does that did that too where Neil had all of this technical ability and maybe he knew all the 40 rudiments of drumming, uh, maybe he didn't, but if the song didn't require a paradiddle or, you know, or triplets or whatever, he just wouldn't put it in there because it didn't fit. And the same thing with Alex Lifeson. If the songs didn't require such, you know, lead guitar shredding, he just wouldn't put it in there because it doesn't fit. And that's what made the songs so much better because they were more complex, they were more thought out and consequently the songs benefited in the end and yet another thing too is that Alex was really playing the role of two guitarists in one he was the rhythm guitarist and the lead guitarist so to make sure that the sound was always full and that nothing was missing he had to use all these you know gadgets to make to give a fuller sound to his playing and that's why so many people, when they hear Rush, they think it's, you know, how, how's it possible that it's just three people making all of the sound? Well, yeah, Geddy Lee is a multitasker where he, he's playing bass and keyboards and singing. And you have Neil Peart, which has all of this, you know, not only the drum kit, but all of the percussive instruments as well. But also Alex Lifeson is also, also multitasking in that he's fulfilling the role of multiple guitarists playing at the same time so he not only had to compose his parts he had to compose them in a way that they were playing simultaneously so that his guitar part in the song was filling in all of the space so that it had a much richer fuller uh, fuller sound and I actually made a comparison in a previous video of Neil Peart versus uh, John Bonham and I was watching some live footage of Led Zeppelin and Led Zeppelin was four people but you know, the only instrument that Robert Plant played was pretty much a harmonica. So it's basically we're talking about three uh, musicians and a singer. And when there were the three of them, the three musicians playing just by themselves, they didn't sound as full. They didn't have as full a sound live that Rush had. Rush definitely, uh, if you think of songs like Xanadu, I don't think there's any song live by Led Zeppelin that sounds as grand um, as that song does, as Xanadu. And only the guys of Rush could pull something like that off. Led Zeppelin didn't do, didn't play like that. So that is due in large part to Alex Lifeson. To Alex Lifeson using his guitar to fill out the rest of the sound. And him being, I would call him a multi-guitarist in a three-piece band because it was required. I had written an article in my blog, theparadiddler.com, about when I reviewed the Time Machine tour uh, that I attended 
in 2011, and I'll include a link in the description below to that article. It's a pretty, pretty good article, I'd say myself. You should just check it out. But in that article, uh, I think I disrespected Alex in a, a bit because I think I fell into the mentality of him not being one of the best guitarists. And I said in that article that he had arrived, that he was then, I think he could be considered one of the best guitarists in the same class as all these other ones that we hold so dear. And, you know, I wrote that then, you know, time went on and afterwards I thought about it, it was like, no, he was, he was always one of the best, even way back at the beginning. Even when you listen to his work on Caress of Steel, which is way back in 1975, I mean, that was, that was an Alex Lifeson show, that record. I mean, it was pretty, you know, the band disses that ba that record, and I think I'll talk about it in another video on Caress of Steel, but the work that Alex did on that album is just a masterpiece. I mean, there's lots of multi-layered guitaring going on, shredding, incredible shredding, like in The Necromancer, and he put his stamp on the guitar industry way back then, and I think we just fell into the trap of seeing how the pundits in the industry who are supposedly in the know, in the know, ranking these guitarists and never including Alex there, but it was because Alex was not that kind of guitarist. If he needed to shred, he did. If the song did not require it, he didn't do it. And the level of restraint, I think, is one of the most sought after characteristics of a musician. If they have the ability to do something, but they hold back, because the song will benefit. I think that's probably one of the greatest characteristics of a great musician. And definitely Alex Lifeson fills that mold. So to me, I don't consider what other people think as far as Alex Lifeson being underrated or overrated, his guitar playing being simple. And you know, I don't, I don't get into any of that because when all of these people actually start scrutinizing the music, and you see it with all of these YouTube reactors, reacting to Rush songs and they just can't believe the incredible musicianship of the three. They recognize Alex Lifeson's contribution and he's definitely not, to me, he's not overshadowed by the other two. He's at the same level. All, all three of them pushed each other further and further and further to be better and better musicians. And they all were of the same mold, of the same thinking. How can we make this song the best it can be? And if I have some ability that I can put in the song, but the song doesn't require it, I'm not going to put it in there. And I think that is the mark of a great all-around, great all-time musician. And I put Alex Lifeson at the top of that list. And that's my spiel on Alex Lifeson, how I consider him to be one of the greatest guitarists of all time, not for the typical reasons that typically are extolled in the industry, but he's just an He's just an all-around great guitarist. He pretty much can do it all. If you have any other reasons why you think Alex Lifeson is one of the great guitarists of all time, please put that in the comments below. And also, don't forget to subscribe and to click that notification bell so that whenever I come out with new videos, you'll be notified that, so that something new is out. Anyway, this is me, Omar Alvarado, of All About Rush, and I hope to see you in the next video. I'd like to provide you with a couple of examples of Alex Lifeson's, I'll call it, shred mastery. During the Roll the Bones tour, obviously songs like Bravado and Where's My Thing, the instrumental, are debuted. And if you've heard Alex Lifeson shred on the guitar, as in the aforementioned examples previously in this video, you'll want to hear these, because uh, I think maybe a lot of Rush fans have not heard this, uh, unless they were at the show back way back in 91 92 and you may have forgotten now for, as far as bravado goes if you watch rush in rio the solo that alex performs on that song is absolutely masterful and the thing about his solos they they're so melodic it's not just about shredding for the fact of shredder shredding shredding for the fact for the mere how do you say it shredding for the sake of shredding. The way he solos fits the song, which is not true about a lot of guitarists. I mean, they're just going up, they're doing scales and whatnot. And yeah, of course, there are guitarists that um, 
shred melodically, as I call it. But anyway, I'm going to include links below to a couple of his performances during the Roll the Bones tour of Bravado and Where's My Thing. And when you hear these, there, there are very few people that can play the guitar like that, like the way Alex plays. Um, not only are the songs masterful in themselves, in and of themselves, but the way he shreds on the guitar on those two songs, and I'm going to include two, two performances, um, two shows, and you'll notice uh, slight differences in when, as far as bravado goes, in one show he solos earlier in the song, uh, and then another, uh, another show he solos later, and as, where's my thing? A couple of examples, uh, two shows. I'm telling you, you've never heard Alex play lead guitar, I think, uh, like he does in these two performances. Um, it's just, it's outstanding. So if you require proof, if you re require evidence, if some if someone is demanding of you, uh, you know, where where has he played? You know, I haven't heard him shred on the guitar like other guitarists. You know, he's he's not as good as those other ones. Uh, yeah. You um, play them these, and they will be converted. <laughs>